Random J Productions presents the Palm Summer League. Today, we're here at the Daytona International Speedway in beautiful Central Florida for this year's running of the WaterTech Duels. So take a look at the dual format for this year. So just like last year, each dual race will be nine laps each. And dual number one will consist of the odd drivers and points, while dual number two will consist of the even drivers and points. However, one big difference this time around is that dual number one will actually set the outside starting spots, while dual number two will set the inside starting spots. So this was the other way, other way around last year. This year has been swapped. But just like last year, the top three finishers of each dual race will get bonus points. First place will get three points. Second place will get two points. Or third place will get a single point. And also the driver or drivers who had the most laps here today also receive a single bonus point. So the maximum points you can earn in one of these dual races is four points. And lastly, we've come to possibly the biggest difference here this year of the dual races. This will set rows four to 18 for the Firecracker 400. As for the top two finishers of each dual race, they will all move on to the Fast Six tomorrow, which will set rows one to three. But now, with all that out of the way, let's now take a look at our starting lineup in our first WaterTech duel here today. So on the front row here in duel number one are two of the hottest drivers up in the point standings. That being Bubba Pop in the 18, the points leader, and the 99 of Alex and Devala. Row two, the 84 of Jason Albert, and the 19 of Kyler Sustry. Row three, a winner from the last race in the Meadowlands, Ross McTrain in the 45, and the 61 of Jordan Forbes. Row four, the summer kickoff winner of Jose Andrew Gutierrez, and next on the fastest driver during Wednesday's practice session, Patrick Mill in the 33. Row five, defending series champion Brendan Beal, and next on the 31 of Roberto Crown Jr. Row six, Keisha Richardson, who lost last year's duel number one by three one thousandths of a second, and next on Callan Baker in the 21, who was the fastest driver during Thursday's practice session. Row 7, Skyward Taylor in the 29. Next to them, the 46 of Johnny Hernandez. We got two rookies in row number 8, Jack Cost in the 57, and Madison Chase in the 06. And finally, in row number 9, we have Haas' teammate Joe T in the 8 car. And next to him, the 59 of Caleb Rose, who's currently last in points. Taking a look at the track info here for today's race, as previously mentioned, both dual races will consist of nine laps at this two and a half mile long super speedway for 31 degrees of banking in the corners. And as for the weather here today in Daytona Beach, a very warm 90 degrees Fahrenheit with 11 mile per inch towards the southeast. And now it is time for the starting command to get our first of two WeatherTech duels underway. I have never been more excited to say four words. Drivers, start your engines! Now, I think these door races are going to be really interesting because this is going to be the first time all week that all these drivers will have a chance to run in a large pack. As well as potential for drivers lower in the standings to pick up much needed bonus points. But here it goes. The pace shot continues down pit road. Bubble Pop is sent the value lead to fill the green in the first water attack duel. Hit the foul and get the best of starts that time by, but Bubbles can move back up to the outside going into turn number two as here's Jason Albert fast approaching a call from Ross McTrain on the inside. Now you see continuing down the back, there was a small gap between McTrain and Gutierrez, so Gutierrez could potentially get a strong run continuing into turn number three this time by as Albert and Bubble remain side by side. Already some three wide towards the back of the small pack with both Skyler Taylor and Cowan Baker getting forced up to the middle. Coming to complete the first lap here in the first water tech duel as Albert moves to the outside to a lead lap number one in front of Bubble Pop as he's now going to be side by side with McTrain. 
And now the two lead drivers on the inside, Gutierrez and McTrain going into turn number one as both of them are going to move to the middle. But Gutierrez right next to Bubble before McTrain moves back down to the inside. Three wide of Brendan Bill, forcing Gutierrez to the middle and Albert to the outside. Down the back, McTrain tries to go to the outside in front of Albert, but there was not enough room there before finally clearing the 84 car going into turn number three. But here comes Brendan Bill for a strong run once again. This time I felt from Keyshawn Richardson as he looks to the inside of the 45, as those two are going to be side by side for the lead now. So Caleb Rose quickly move in front of Callum Baker and Johnny Hernandez move to the inside as this pack is already going to be three by three coming to lap number three. You're for defending series champion, now your new leader. So going into turn number one, we're still three by three with only two cars now in the middle. That being the two Beacon Mopar drivers, so Kyle Sustry and Jordan Forbes, as both Patrick Miller and Berto Crown now going to move to the middle behind those two Dodges. Continuing down the back, Shorty Bill is going to move to the outside, or Keyshawn Richardson maintains the middle right beside McTrain going into turn number three as Richardson gets a strong run moving back down to the inside as he's going to be side by side for the defending PSL champion. Jack Cost also come up in this picture in the 57, as well as his teammate Joe T in the 8 car. As the back of the pack is once again 3 by 3 with 3 drivers trying to space themselves from all this chaos. That being Johnny Hernandez, Roberto Crown, and Callan Baker. But coming to lap number 4 is going to be a former H.O. Bell champion leading the way. Richardson and Bill continue to remain side by side with the middle line once again trying to make their presence known going into turn number 1. On board of Kyle Sustry, who of course has been the lead driver of this middle line for the past several laps now. And so far, remain committed to get this middle line to work. As down the back three, here comes the strong run from the middle as he's now three wide with Madison Chase and Albert. And besides the first six cars in line, everyone in this pack is now three by three, with Richardson and Beale still side by side due to turns three and four. Coming to lot number five, looks like Richardson's going to win once again as he's now up in the middle in front of Jack Cost, performing back down to the inside in front of Joe T.S. We're three wide now for seconds. Basically, everyone is packed now, three by three, going into turn number one. Richardson's still in the middle, trying to block Joe T on the inside, but Joe T's there. He's going to force Richardson up high as those two are not going to be side by side for the lead. Continuing down the back, Shooter Richardson maintains the outside lane as the three drivers behind him almost door to door for one another going into turn number three. With Madison Chase now forcing Joe T to the middle as we're three wide now, this time for the lead. Everybody, everyone in this pack once again, three by three off of turn four as Joe T and Chase remain side by side coming to lap number six. That time by Madison Berry led over Joe T. Those two continue to remain side by side going into turns one and two, while the rest of the pack continues to remain three by three. There you see Colin Baker getting a strong run on this inside lane, which will help out both Madison and Caleb Grills get around Joe T, as the eight cars lose a lot of ground on the outside lane. Continuing down the back, should lane, Madison's going to move to the outside in front of Joe T. While Caleb Rose settles with the middle in front of Jack Cost, making Skyler Taylor down the lead driver on the inside going into turn number three. But Madison moves back down to the middle in front of Rose. And as we're on border from here, Taylor's going to get a strong run on the outside to be side by side with him for second place. Almost three wide that time by between the 29, 59, and 8 car. But for now, is Madison Chase once again leading the way as we come to lot number seven. Now, even though Madison has a decent gap over the rest of the field, that is certainly not going to last for long as the inside lane, especially going into these corners, almost always gets strong runs. There's going to be no exception this time around as Taylor gets a strong run going into turn number two, peeking to the inside of the 06 before Madison comes down the block. Continuing down the back story, Hernandez and Miller are both going to move to the middle in front of Gutierrez, making Baker not the lead driver on the inside into turn number three. As both Madison and Taylor come down, here's Taylor now looking to the inside of Chase for the lead. Side by side once again for the lead as both Hernandez and Miller move back down to the inside, while both Rose and Haas try to follow Madison's line off turn number four. Coming back to the travel, to two laps to go here in duel number one, Taylor and Haas remain side by side for the lead, as most of his back has settled once again in two by two formation. Taylor led that time by, but they're going to move to the middle in front of absolutely nobody with no help at all. As here's Jonathan Hernandez on the inside, making a three wide for the lead on the two rookies. 
And even though Haas does move down to the middle, it's not going to really help Taylor at all as Johnny Hernandez off turn number two will clear both the 29 and 06. And Patrick Mill now being free wide with the two rookies. Continuing down the back, Hernandez is actually going to move up the track in between the two rookies. But he's got to watch out for Miller as he's under the lead driver on the inside of helpful Kellen Baker going into turn number three. Hernandez tried to block that time by, and but instead he's going to be side by side of Miller through turn number four this time by. Off of four, but Baker and Miller are going to move to the middle in front of Haas as Miller remains side by side of Hernandez this time by. Coming to the white flag, one lap to go here in duel number one. These two continue to maintain their respective lines as you're going to turns one and two for the final time. No one moves down to the inside. Hernandez moves down to the middle as just everyone else is three wide behind. Looks like Hernandez changes his mind, maintains the outside of the lane, but Miller is still trying to move down to the inside lane in front of Roberto Crown as they come off turn number two for the final time. Down the back straight for the final time here in duel number one. Miller's going to move back up to the middle as he's still side by side of Hernandez, but watch out for the run. Both Roberto Crown and Santa Fala have going into turn number three as Miller moves down in front of the 31, still side by side of Hernandez for, before moving back up the track into turn number four as they're going to be three wide for the leadoff, turn number four for the final time. And even though Crown wasn't able to make it quite stick, they're coming back to the line. It's going to be between Hernandez and Miller for the win. Coming to the line this time by, oh my God, that was close. And for the second year in a row here in duel number one, we have a photo finish to the line, this time being Patrick Miller beating out Johnny Hernandez by one one hundredth of a second. So definitely a big congratulations to Patrick Miller for winning duel number one here at Daytona, as well as a big shout out to Johnny Hernandez and third place driver Roberto Crown, as all three of them will advance to tomorrow's Fast Six for a chance at the Firecracker 400 pole. But let's briefly take a look at the replay just to see how close that finish was between Miller and Hernandez to the line. So this was on the final lap down the back straightaway. Miller moving up to the middle here. And there you see Johnny Hernandez on the outside getting a strong run pull from Skylar Taylor. At this point, Hernandez has the advantage over Miller. And despite a strong run from Crown going into turn number three, Miller moved down just enough in front of Crown to block any sort of momentum. And at that point, it was just between Hernandez and Miller who are still side by side off of four and coming to the trioval with Miller just really edging out Hernandez to the line. And just for reference, how close that was, one one hundredth of a second, not quite as close as last year's three one thousandths of a second, but it's still enough to be tied as the fourth closest finish on the channel, of course, being tied with the first ever Golf Summer Series race at Armory Digital. But anyways, let's take a look at the full finishing results here on duel number one. So here we go, Patrick Miller with 33 wins, Water Tech duel number one here at Daytona. And with Miller not only winning the race, but also winning the most laps, actually being tied with several drivers, in fact. For leading most laps, he will get maximum points here today in the duels, getting four points. And of course, Johnny Hernandez coming up just short in second place, and Roberto Crown in third will join Miller during tomorrow, tomorrow's Fast Six to determine the Firecracker 400 pole. Meanwhile, Kellen Baker in fourth comes up just, just short of the Fast Six, ironically being edged out by Crown, also by one 100 for a second. Meanwhile, Skylar Taylor in fifth and Santa Val in sixth will be the highest running drivers of their respective manufacturers of Toyota and Dodge. Meanwhile, John Cost will finish 7th for the 57, but Madison Chase also got the bonus point for winning the most laps, will finish 8th here today. You know, a 9th is point scooter bubble pop in the 18, while Jose Angel Gutierrez will round off the rest of the top 10. And as for the rest of the results here in the running order, Jason Albert will finish 11th, Caleb Rose 12th, Sus Try 13th, Ross McTrain 14th with the lowest finishing Ford, while Joe T will be the lowest finishing dot of Toyota, I should say, in 15th. Meanwhile, Jordan Flores will finish 16th. Meanwhile, Keyshawn Richardson, fin despite finishing 17th, will also get the bonus point for winning most laps as it was a three-way tie between Miller, Chase, and Richardson as the three drivers who won the most laps of the day as they all led two laps apiece. And finally, Brendan Beal in the 37, the defending PSL champion, will not only finish last here on duel number one, but also start second to last place on Thursday night's Firecracker. And that will do it for WaterTech Duel Number One here at Daytona. That for a very interesting race with all these drivers all close together in a somewhat big pack, as well as of course a very very exciting finish. But we're not done quite yet, as after this break, we'll be right back with you guys for the start of WaterTech Duel Number Two. Welcome back to the Palm Summer League here at Daytona for Firecracker Week as we're just moments away for the start of our second WaterTech duel here today. But before we do that, let's first quickly take a look at the starting lineup for this duel race. So on the front row, we got two of the Matthews, starting with Matthew Hill, the Florida native, and actually some of the 49 of Dylan Matthews. 
Row 2, Riley Sperling to 28. And next to him, the fellow Dodge and affiliate teammate, Ryder Reeman to 6. Row 3, the 9 of Whoopsie. And the other Matthew from Florida, Matthew Burnett into 2. Row 4, Dan Mattiel into 17. And the Fednik Firecracker 400 winner, Nick Sand to 40. In row 5, we've got two former Golf Summer Series champions, Ryan Wilson the 48, and 88 of Anthony Hernandez. In row 6, Daniel Voiles, who finished second this dual race last year, and next to him, the 11 car, Jordan Stout. In row 7, Brandon Carruthers is in the 20, and the 97 of Nathan Stapleton. In row 8, the 41 of Philip Torres, and the 1 of Alex Mullen. And finally, in row number nine, is the winner from this dual race last year, the 53 of Random J. So much like last time, it is now time for the starting command for our second WeatherTech duel of the day. Say it with me. Drivers, start your engines. Now, they always say the second dual race is more chaotic than the first one. And I think it's especially the case this year just because this dual race is going to set that valuable inside lane, which is the place, which has always been the place to be at these super speedways, thanks to all that rubber from that first dual race, which is very important, especially during this hot summer day. Anyways, as the pitch truck continues down pit road, Matthew Hill and Dylan Matthews will see the green flag to start the second Water Tech duel here today. And already going into turn number one, Daniel Voiles and much of the other drivers around him in the back of the pack laying back on the inside trying to build up that run, which they will get going into turn number two, with Voiles catching right back up to Wilson. Continuing down the back, Shadari for the first time here in the second duel race. Everyone just feels so two by two. Matthew Hill is still maintaining the advantage over Matthews as we head into turn number three. I'm going to complete the first lap here in the second dual race. It's going to be the driver who started first. Matthew Hill winning the way as he moves up to the outside in front of Matthews. Open door for Riley Spurley to be side by side for the lead. Now, despite both these drivers being PSO rookies this summer, this is far from Hill's first firecracker as he competed in both the 2021 and 2022 editions of the event. And in that 2022 firecracker, Hill did start on the pole. But now, coming off turn number two, is going to be Riley Spurley clearing Hill for the lead. And the fellow Dodge and affiliate teammate Lipsy behind. Continuing down the back, Shadari Spurley is going to move up to the middle in front of Hill. Open the door for those two aforementioned dodges going into turn number three as Spurley tried to block Lipsy that time by, but instead Lipsy is going to force Spurley to the outside as the two affiliate teammates are side by side for the lead. Now, of course, their respective teams of Relfan Motorsports and NS Racing share a technical alliance with one another, but sometimes that logic is completely thrown out the window as they come to lot number three with Lipsy barely bringing Spurley back to the line. But now off the trial for Lipsy, he's going to move to the middle. Open the door for Dan Mattiello to make it three wide for the lead going into turn number one. And if Lipsy continue to move up the racetrack, he's going to force Spurl even higher up the racetrack as he has absolutely no help at all in that 28. Struck down the back straight away. Dan Mattiello is going to go with his teammate as Lipsy is still three wide. This time with Ryan Wilson on the inside, a vote from Daniel Voiles in the 01. And that strong run from Wilson is going to force Matt Seale to the middle, making those two drivers side by side for the lead through turns three and four. You know, Spurley is still all by himself on the outside. There's now four wide coming to lap number four as Matthew Hill and Torres nearly touched that time by. These drivers are still four wide off the triangle. Unsurprisingly, random J force an issue in the 53, where Spurley finally backs off going into turn number one, ending the four wide chaos for now. I would imagine PSL officials are none too happy with that, especially at a race like this where all these drivers are trying their absolute best 
to not wreck their cars before the summer's biggest race. Meanwhile, continuing down the back story, Wilson's going to move to the outside in front of Matt Tiello, while Boyles is going to settle off the middle in front of Brandon Carruthers who is going into turn number three as Wilson tried to block Boyles, but it was too late. Boyles moving down to the inside now is going to be side by side of Wilson for the lead. But Brandon Carruthers peek his nose to the inside of the 01 before Boyles comes down the block. Coming to lap number five this time by Boyles and Wilson remain side by side for the lead with Boyles beating out Wilson to the line. On board with Daniel Boyles in the turn number one as he remains side by side with Wilson. Now if you want to talk about a driver who's seeking redemption after last year, it's definitely Daniel Boyles as he not only finished runner up in this dual race, but also in the firecracker, losing out to Nick Sant by just eight one hundredths of a second. Continuing down the back, Wilson and Foles remain side by side for the lead in their respective lines, but Random J is now fast approaching on the inside into turn number three, as both Foles and Crutters will come down the block. Meanwhile, Wilson also moves down to the racetrack, this time to the middle, as he hopes to get help from the 41 of Philip Torres. Coming to complete lap number five, Boyles will lead once again, with Crutters now up towards the middle of the racetrack, with Random now forcing the issue, making it three wide for a second. Now, Random, of course, is one of the most aggressive super speeder racers in this entire field. He is no stranger to being aggressive at these play tracks, including earlier today, back in lap number four. And now this time around, Random is going to force Boyles to the outside of the track as he's going to be side by side for the leadoff turn number two. And with help from Alex Mullen on the inside, Random's going to have the advantage over Boyles down the back straight away. While everybody else in this pack behind this top four, all three wide going into turn number three. And it looks like that time by Random and Mullen move down to the inside in front of the two Dodges of both Stapleton and Ream. Carl Bowles is riding between both the middle and outside, coming off turn number four as he settles to the outside of the lane, once again tucking around in front of Brandon Carruthers. Coming off the trial, looks like Random and Mullen are both going to move to the middle in front of Torres before they both move back down to the inside, coming to lap number seven, with Random leading the lane to 53. Of course, Random won this very dual race last year, trying to go two for two here at Daytona, but going into turn number one, Random moves to the outside in front of Voyles, making Mullen now the new lead driver on the inside, as they're going to be side by side for the lead going into turn number two. Looks we'll like Mullen, repelled from Stapleton, will clear Random with ease off turn number two and continuing down the back straight away. There is three wide everywhere behind Mullen to turn three and four as Browder continues to fast approach on the inside as he has help from Stout and Hernandez. Coming to lap number eight, only two laps to go. Mullen's going to move to the outside in front of Random. Three or three before moving back down to the middle in front of Stapleton as he's not going to be side by side of Brad Reed for the lead. Mullen once again shifting lanes on the upper side of the track, but Ryder continues to maintain the lower side of the track going into turn number one as Ryder Reed will clear Alex Mullen for the lead into turn number two this time by. Down the back, both Brado and Stout move up the track, with Brado being in front of Alex Mullen on the inside while Stout settles in front of Stapleton. Andy Hernandez still on the inside going into turn number three as Wolfram tried to block the 88 car that time by. And Anthony's going to take advantage of that missed opportunity as he's now side by side or stout for second off turn number four. But of course, he has his eyes set towards Brad and Ream as coming to the travel this time by. We see the white flag. One lap to go here at Daytona for duel number two. That time by, Brad had a 10 and a half second lead over the rest of the field. That's quickly going to diminish as Hernandez and Stout remain side by side for second through turns one and two. And Stout maintaining the outside of Hernandez on the inside. And as I say that, here's a strong run from Hernandez into turn number two as he looks at the inside of Reed, but Reed moving up to the outside of the track, down the back straight away for the final time. And continuing down this back straight away, Hernandez is going to move to the middle in front of Nixon. Once again, leaving only four cars on the inside, being one of a match for Hernandez into turn number three, as both Hernandez and Nixon move down to the inside to block the two. And if the inside continuing their strong momentum to turn three and four, it's only going to cause Brado to fall back even further in the middle and outside. And looks like coming to the travel and to the checkered flag appears that no one's going to have any answers for Anthony Hernandez as he wins Water Tech Duel number two. Of course, a congratulations to Anthony Hernandez for winning duel number two, as well as a congratulations to the second and third place drivers of Nick Sant and Matt Renette, as all three of those drivers will advance to the Fast Six tomorrow. But real quick before we wrap up today's broadcast, let's first take a look at the finishing results for duel number two, the point standings after both duel races, and the six drivers that will participate in tomorrow afternoon's Fast Six. 
So here we go. Anthony Hernandez wins water attack duel number two, getting three bonus points here today. And even though this is not a full on main wine points paying race, this is the first time the former Golf Summer Series champion has won a race on the channel since the 2021 Geico 500 at Talladega. Meanwhile, defending Firecracker 400 winner Nick Sant will finish second, getting two bonus points here today. When Matt Brunin, the two car, will get a single bonus point here today, finishing third as all three of those drivers, as I have mentioned, of Hernandez, Nick Sant, and Brunette will move on to the Fast Six tomorrow afternoon. We know Brad Ream will finish fourth in the sixth car, had a really strong run at the end of this race, but unfortunately just couldn't maintain the inside away and got too far ahead from the rest of the pack. We know Matthew Hill in the 90 is going to finish fifth, while Stapleton finishes sixth. Jordan Stout finishes seventh as the highest placing Pontiac here in duel number two. Whoops, who will finish eighth. Philip Torres ninth, while Alex Bowen will round up for the rest of the top 10. And as for the rest of the running order, Dan Mattia will finish 11th. Then when Matthews is the highest placing Toyota, will finish 12th. So definitely not a good day for Toyota, and at least in here in duel number two as all three of the Toyotas in this race will finish below the top 10. Meanwhile, former Toyota driver Random J will finish 13th, Riley Spurley 14th. Meanwhile, Daniel Boyles in 15th is the only driver to get the extra bonus point for the most laps. Remember back in duel number one, three drivers got that bonus point. But this time around, despite Boyles also winning two laps, he'll be the only driver to claim that extra bonus point. Meanwhile, Ryan Wilson will finish 16th for Brandon Carruthers, the winner from last year's duel number one and the pole sitter during last year's Firecracker We'll have the fortune or misfortune, depending on who you ask, of starting dead last during this year's edition of the summer's biggest race. And now for the point stings after today's dual races, where nothing really has changed when it comes to overall point leaders. But one thing that did change is Matthew Burnett, who moves back inside the top 10 in the points. As going into the day, he was in a four-way tie for knife with Ross Train, Whoopsie, and Forbes. And Burnett's single point here today was able to break that tie with those three other drivers. And now here are your six drivers that move on to tomorrow night's Fast Six that will not only contend for the Firecracker pole, but also set rows one to three. So you obviously got the dual winners of Patrick Miller and Anthony Hernandez, Johnny Hernandez, rating Firecracker 400 winner Nick Sant, Roberto Crown in the 31, and the two of Matthew Burnett. So two Fords and four Chevys make up this year's Fast Six. And of course, as Pierce mentioned, that Fast Six will be on tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, the rest of Firecracker League will continue on on Wednesday, the night before the Firecracker, where we have the Daytona Mystery Race. While, of course, on Thursday, 4th of July, will be this year's edition of the summer's biggest race, the Firecracker 400. And those are races you definitely do not want to miss. As always, y'all, thank you guys for watching this race. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time.